We are told that at the start of a convention, Melinda had 100 t-shirts, I'll underline the important numbers here, 250 pens, and 500 buttons to give away to convention attendees. By the end of the convention, she had one-fifth the number of t-shirts, one-fifth the number of pens, and none of the buttons remaining, or another way of thinking about it, zero buttons remaining. Which of the following computes the number of t-shirts, pens, and buttons Melinda had remaining by the end of the convention? So pause this video and see if you can work through this. All right, now let's do it together. And there's a couple of ways that you could approach it. One way is to just try to come up with an expression that would describe the number of t-shirts, pens, and buttons Melinda has by the end of the convention and see if that is equivalent to any of these expressions. Another way is you could look at the expressions and see which of these make sense. So actually, let's just do it both ways. So if we just try to generate our own expression, even before looking at these choices, we know that she is left with one-fifth of the original number of t-shirts, and she originally had 100 in t-shirts. So how many t-shirts is she left with now? So she's left with 1 fifth times 100. And then how many pens is she left with now? Well, she know, or we, they tell us, that we are left with 1 fifth the number, the original number of pens. So that's going to be plus 1 fifth times the original number of pens times 250. And then how many buttons? Well, they tell us that she is left with none of the buttons are remaining. So zero buttons. Or we don't even have to write that. We could just write it like this. Because if you add zero, it obviously doesn't change the quantity. So let's see, do we see 1 fifth times 100 plus 1 fifth times 250 over here? Well, no, we don't see that exactly. But we can see that all of the choices here, it looks like they have some fraction times the sum of some things. And then in some cases, they might add something else. So one way to think about it is we could either take these expressions and distribute the try to distribute the one fifth, or we could try to factor out the one fifth here to make this look more like one of these choices. So let's do that. So if we factor out uh, one fifth, this is going to be the same thing as one fifth times one hundred plus two hundred and fifty plus two hundred and fifty, which we can immediately see is choice B. Now we could have gone the other way around. We could have started with the choices. We could have said, look, choice A has 1 fifth times the sum of our original number of t-shirts, pens, and buttons. And that would have been accurate if we were left with 1 fifth the number of t-shirts, 1 fifth the number of pens, and 1 fifth the number of buttons. But they say that none of the buttons are remaining. So we know that this is going to be wrong because we have the we're essentially saying that one-fifth of the buttons are remaining. One-fifth times 500, that'd be 100 buttons remaining. And they say none of the buttons are remaining. Here, we have one-fifth times the number of t-shirts and pens, but then we just have the original buttons. And that is almost the opposite of what they're saying. They're saying we have no buttons remaining versus 500, so we could rule that out. This one is saying four-fifths of the number of t-shirts and the number of pens. Well, once again, that's not what they told us. They tell us one-fifth of the number of t-shirts and the number of pens. You could rule that out. Now, this is doing one-fifth of times the number, the original number of t-shirts. But then, for some reason, they're multiplying that times the number of pens. And so that one just mathematically is not what they're describing there. So we could rule that one out as well.